Welcome back everyone, Jose21 Crisis here and today we're playing some more Grand Prix World 2001. So this is the first Grand Prix World episode I've recorded since I bought a new graphics card and there are a few graphical glitches mostly because for some reason I cannot use software mode to render this game and just gonna have to cope with it and I hope the recording doesn't show these glitches but um, you might see the little action, uh, Merylis action recording thing down below, occasionally flashing. Yeah, that can happen. Anyway, last time around we did Germany and we did Hungary, and Germany did not go as well as I wanted. I wanted points, we didn't get points, and Hungary was going to be points until um, the guys' brakes decided to give up, which I could have stopped. And I didn't because I did not notice. Things that happen. Okay, so what are we going to do on this one? On this one, I did uh, set up testing already. What I did was uh, 160 miles of testing. It was expensive, but it was necessary. 19% setup, 55% research, and we had 90, 90, 10, 10, just the usual. Full setup. Full research, I will not invest in setup because I can skip the wind tunnel uh, stage as usual. You know, just another upgrade. 33% in model design, then we have 67% in another traction control system. Not going to do anything here, I do have two spares. Sadly, Asia Tech has not delivered another engine to us, which, you know, I will appreciate another engine, but we don't get it. As for this, I will deal with this in Japan. and. There's still a bunch of time for Japan. Uh, for sponsorship, we have 24% here, which I think is what I left it at at the previous episode. No one on Renault because we got the maximum bonus. No one here. Uh, we got people on Loctite and people talking to Nortel and uh, talking to General Electric. No one on LG, but that's because it's just a one year deal. It's not that important. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's it in terms of like off-track stuff. I can very, very quickly jump in here on the racing stuff. So, Spa, Belgium. Uh, just rain points because, you know, it's Spa, it may rain, and if it rains, gonna get an advantage. Gonna save these setup points because I need to arrive to the Nürburgring and I need to arrive to... Uh, what was this track? Actually, I don't care that much about Monza, but uh, to Nürburgring and to Suzuka, I need to arrive with full points. I'm going to invest these six points in the next race, which is Monza. If it rains, we're going to have great success, at the very least. Hopefully it does rain, unlike uh, Britain. Hopefully it does rain. Soft tires for this one. This particular track has the lowest a fuel penalty and the lowest tire wear penalty of all racetracks. For this one, I can increase off racing line to that and curb usage to that, and we should not have any issues. Top speed, it was to. I, I already forgot. It's been a while. It's been like five days or something, like a week. Seven and everything else on one. That's gonna be for the race, for qualifying, and of, I'm of course going to race everything else. Save the orders, save the game, confirm everything else, confirm the setup, confirm the assembly, that's confirmed already, doesn't matter. Okay, uh, are we fighting with... yeah, we're fighting with BR. Okay, we move. The Belgian Grand Prix, uh, I don't know what to expect on this one. On this one, last time around we won which was pretty awesome, General Ace is that good, but I really don't know what to expect out of this one, considering the boys aren't, like, top tier. But, you know, let's go by steps, let's start qualifying. Qualifying is gonna be all soft tires, and unlike Spa, un unlike uh, Hockenheim, the zero stop doesn't work that well in this one, so we're just gonna rely on one-stop strategies, the tires easily make the one-stop, so... Let's just, let's just get in there, see what we can do. 
Well, was this an interesting qualifying session with David Coulthard taking pole position? And there's, let me sum this. Let me sum this. Uh, sum this up. Um, there's at least one car from every team that's better than us ahead of us. So you have two McLarens, a Benetton, a Williams, a Ferrari, a Sauber, and a VAR. So you have Coulthard and Weber in the front row, Raikkonen and Schumacher, uh, DeMichael, in the second row, Marquez and Montoya in the third row, then you have Hakkinen and Bernoulli in the fourth row, Alonso and Panis in the fifth row. And now, um, we definitely should have been lower. The reason is that Panis underperformed for some reason, and Fisichella massively underperformed. He's pretty much out of this championship now, I, I, I think. Berti, he did lap times in the wet, and that's generally not a good idea. So he will not be in this race. Here is the rest of them. Well, this was very weird. Look at this. Uh, David Coulthard is like 7 tenths faster than anyone else. At least us, we're 2 tenths lower than Weber. But Coulthard, he just broke the timesheets. He was insane. Overcast conditions and high wind speed is not exactly what I'd like, but we're going to have to deal with it. So, Bernoldi is going to go with the traditional two-stop strategy, pitting on lap 22. 22 laps on each set of tires. Start on set 5, then set 6. And then Alonso is going to be going a bit longer. He's going to have the late one-stop strategy, going on lap 26, then... Uh, back for 18 more laps the, the the soft tire especially with uh the low amount of orders i have they easily can make the cut they easily can make it and if it happens to rain then so much better i think i'm going to load bernoldi with 24 laps of fuel so that if needed i can extend him one or two more laps so that i don't get uh a pit stop glitched okay seems like a solid strategy the one stop so let's see if we can make it work. As per usual, go ahead and lower this. Okay, boys, I I legitimately hope that the little uh, glitch stuff that I told you exists, it's not currently affecting the recording. Here we go. And we're off. 11th and 8th, that's that, 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 that'll do. That'll do. And it looks like the BARs have some sort of issue because it, there is now a big bridge. First of all, there's a bunch of lag because I'm not being able to run this thing on on software mode. I'm gonna figure out something in a moment, but at the very least, let's just finish this this very long first lap. But yeah, I usually run this in software mode. Don't uh, do that. Sure, whatever. I usually run this in software mode and it doesn't glitch, it doesn't have any graphical glitches and stuff, but for whatever reason, if I try that, now that the graphics card is installed, it doesn't work. And I don't know why. But anyway, 10th and 11th, that's a more legitimate position than, than whatever else we've been doing. Let's just, let's see, if we turn off the feeds. Okay, that goes a bit faster, but I want to have... Eddie Irvine's gone. Good. Turn on... Where is it? I missed the TV feed. Okay, there we go. And now I need the... Okay, map. Now turn off the braking because I don't want to burn the brakes. It happened already once and it wasn't... It was my fault. Let's talk about it. Okay, physical I jumped to third. Yeah. There must be allegations that... Ferrari have traction control or whatever. Anyway, I will pause the recording right here and go out of the game and come back when I find a method to stop all of this lag. Be right back. So, a solution was not found and from now on we're gonna have a bit of lag when I play the game and there's a bunch of cars going around. So, I guess the best solution will be putting up this and having the least amount of cars on screen because that apparently is what fucks it up um yeah everything was better when it had integrated integrated graphics which it's not a common it's not a common thing to say anyway i will oh yeah here's the order i can really quickly show you the race order now 
there, there it is. I just hope these freaking glitches don't show up in the recording because they're annoying. Okay, I will cut the recording again and I will see you later. Hopefully when more important stuff happens. I'm gonna have this one on the race order. I mean, I could have this one also be another stuff, but I want to be able to see the cars and right now it looks stable. It's gonna get slower later, but uh, for now it looks stable. For now we're looking good, and I hope we look better. God damn it. The, the, the biggest problem with these glitches is that it, it, it annoys my vision. But, you know, just gonna have to deal with it. Anyway, I'll see you later when more important stuff happens. Another one. Another brakes issue, and this one is not salvageable, man. At least I don't think it is. It's just a random failure, and when you get random failures, you don't you don't leave. Put set number three. Let's see. I mean, I don't know why I bothered to do that, because he's not going to make it, but... Get out of the way. And also just push, push, push. There have been a few retirements already, so it's not like... It's not like this is going to change much <laughs> because we're slow but there have been a few retirements already so far Raikkonen and Irvine have retired like I'm like like you saw Raikkonen retired there goes Bernoulli okay so it's up to Alonso now which you know yeah but and I well okay organize yourself at the very least, burn all the DNF early so that his car doesn't get that much damage and wear. I'm still gonna have to invest two spare parts into fixing his car, but it could have been considerably worse. And why is Panis in the pits and Saras in just DNF? But yeah, that's 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 been happening. But why is Panis in the pits so early? He must be three stopping, I guess, and that means he's not gonna be con a contender for anything. That for win podium or whatever michael is gone for whatever reason like he's just gone away and he's probably gonna win this race second is actually juan montoya no he's not it's not montoya anymore he was montoya now it is uh Hakinen. then you have physicella montoya and then kulhar kulhar just faded after his amazing pole position then you have weber alonso and a uh, lazy, yeah, that's a lazy. Maybe Tarso Marquez is in that group ahead. No, Tarso Marquez is gone too. Say again, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw him DNF at the start of this clip, come on. So, yeah. And it looks like Weber is gonna DNF any moment now. So, let's get Alonso to overtake him. I was going to eventually start a little recording that says yeah this is not gonna be a that exciting of a race and now everyone's dnfing alonso is passing people and we just need to pass someone else if we want points which we can most certainly do either on the pit stops or on track but oh yeah barry keller is there too <laughs> yeah I, I i knew i was forgetting someone but yeah barry keller is up there too so yeah this race is looking fairly decent for 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 now it's just that again i hope this glitch isn't showing up in the recording otherwise it's gonna be annoying but yeah looking good hope it looks better hope it improves i will see you later when well weber just pit maybe they'll fix the issue with weber but i doubt it anyway i'll see you later it's not gonna be when we pit it's probably when the next front runner dnfs well, would you look at that? Not only is Jordan out, but it's also raining, which... You know I set up my cars for rain, right? Well, at least one of them is still running. Anyway, um, uh, earlier, Fisichella, Hakkinen, the Williams, uh, and Alessi, they all pit. Uh, I think the only people saying out also, goodbye, Jaguar. Uh, all, um, uh, I think the only people on a one-stop are Alonso, uh, the Michael, Hakkinen, that Hakkinen? No, that's Kulhar. Sorry, I'm confused. Number eight is Kulhar. <laughs> okay. The Michael, Kulhar, and Montoya. Montoya is on a two-stop. <laughs> Never mind. 
or it could be an early a one stop with an early pit stop. Um, the AI the AI usually doesn't do that, but they could. So it's probably a one. It's possibly a one stop with an with an early stop. But if it isn't and positions stay as is. It's gonna be another podium for Alonso, which you know I wouldn't mind this little streak he has of every time he finishes on the points, he's on the podium. It will be very good, and it's getting wetter, which it's gonna be also pretty good. I wouldn't mind that on lap 25. It's sufficiently wet for inters, but if it is on like the middle, if the track is damp. And I have to switch tires, I'm gonna stay on the dries. If I had to pit again for inters, then I pit again, but otherwise, nah, I'm just gonna gonna stay on the proper tire. Besides, who am I, who am I gonna beat? Physical or Montoya? I'm pretty sure I can beat them on pace. I mean, considering the fact that uh, Alonso is capping Fisichella, yes, 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 Fisichella is gonna have to. He's, he's on a heavier fuel load than Alonso, but he's capping him, and that's something. That's actually very good. And it's not like pitting for inters, like saying two laps on the dries and then pitting, for, and then the track getting wet is gonna get me closer to cool her or anything. So there's also that. I'll see you when Alonso has to pit and make a proper review of what has happened in the race so far. And Alonso just retired. Why did he retire? He retired because the man ran out of talent. <laughs> Retire because of driver. Man, we were going to get points on this one and you decide to crash on your own. <sighs> At the very least, we're gonna get an upgrade for Monza, but Monza is not a good track for us. We don't have a good engine, and I usually don't do good at Monza. Who are we following then? Who are we gonna follow? I guess we could follow the Michael, but you know, this was a clear cut chance at points. Alonso just blew it. <laughs> Ran out of talent, man. This. Well, at the very least, he didn't give our pit crew a chance to screw up. Let's just see the positives. At least our pit crew did not screw up. They didn't get the chance to. Well, I guess I'll start recording again after uh, Michael Schumacher wins this race. <laughs> you know, I wasn't planning on doing Monza. On this particular episode, on this particular uh, today, because I was pretty sure I was going to end uh, this race pretty late, and I was not going to have the time to do Monza. But now, looking at the time, I'm probably going to be able to do Monza. And yeah, <laughs> thank you, Alonso. You did great. Well, Michael Schumacher ended up dominating this race, and it eventually got wet, which. Makes me even sadder now because we had invested a ton of wet, uh, a ton of a ton of rain points, and we couldn't see them in action because our guys DNF one because our brake supplier, uh, I guess us because we cannot upgrade, upgrade ourselves our brake system. I guess ourselves are screwed that one up because our brakes weren't up to the task, and the other one was because Alonso ran out of time, and I pretty much have. Uh, found the title of this episode, which <sighs> Michael wins, and I think at this point he's pretty much locked up this championship barring disaster. Second's gonna be David Coulthard, who still hasn't finished the lap. Third is going to be who the hell is gonna be third? Barry Kello. Barry Kello, unless a lazy takes it away from him, and it looks like a lazy wants it. Remember, he won here last time around. And he's pretty good in the wet. Actually, let's find that. Let's find that 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 fight. Where is it? Alesi. There. Let's see. Can he do it? Can he actually catch up and overtake? He's running out of time, though. Can he be on the podium? And... Nope, he cannot. He cannot make the podium. It's going to be Barrichello. There is that. And thanks to Ferrari's strategy, Fisichella threw away his chance at the championship. 
So Michael wins from Kulhar, Barrichello and Alessi. That's everyone on the lead lap. Then you have Hakkinen, physical, physical in the points actually. Montoya dropped the ball. Montoya was ahead of Fisichella and he dropped the ball. Weber, Trulli and Ralf Schumacher round out the top 10 and then you have the rest of them. This makes me extra sad because, well, this makes me extra sad because this here in third could have been Alonso, but he DNF'd things that happened. Michael has a 15 point lead now from Coulthard. Is Kelly dropping the ball hard on this one? Again, uh, there are 30 points on display. There are 30 points, uh, 30 points out there in the championship. It will require Michael dropping the ball very, very hard for Coulthar or Physical to win this championship. So this fight is between them. I don't think anyone's catching the Michael anymore. At least we're still tied with BAR. At least Fisichella salvaged the situation and prevented BAR from scoring points. And we definitely aren't catching Benetton or Sauber anymore. We can still beat BAR. We just need some good races. Let me save this particular game. And let's see. I will take my prize for worst manager of the month. Michael at an race, race win. Frost had a nightmare race. Both drivers failed to finish. Very happy to see both cars in the top six. Of course, they're going to win this championship. Who else is going to challenge them? Jaguar is in Asia Tech Engine's eye. Good luck. Good luck, Jaguar. David pulled her fastest lap. Ferrari with a skill issue in the pit stops. And a bunch of driver aids. We don't need... We don't need... Active suspension, that's the least of my concerns. Made a lot of cash because testing is expensive and so are the 2003 cars. Motivate your people and you might be able to get the job done. <laughs> yeah. Car upgrade and car wear, we're gonna, we're gonna deal with that. We're gonna do research in a moment. We're ready to build, we're ready to build. Manufacture spares and driver aids. We're gonna get better deals with Northrell and General Electric. Everything else is just like licensing stuff and stuff that happens. Okay. Let's fill up the commercial department completely. Except I cannot do that, can I? No, I can't. Okay. Add that extra person. Here we are full, here we are full, and here we are full. I'm waiting for for an increase in morale here. Gibson, you, you, you need to do a better job. Okay. Let's start with this screen. Confirm the model design. The, the driver is going nowhere, doesn't matter. Burn that research. And construct that component. 67%, that's almost the highest we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this car to 70%, I think. Upgrade the 2002 car, build a 2003 car, and build. Hmm. We're gonna have to build a 2003 car and like a million. A million twenty, man. Jesus Christ. Okay. And that gives me enough chance to repair car number four. Alonso gets car one, Bernoulli gets car four, and we have car two for testing and car three for research and development. That should be good enough. Let's just invest those setup points right away. Um. I'm gonna put all my eggs in one basket and put most of the points on Alonso and give Bernoldi just one rain point. This is a mistake. I should evenly distribute the points, but remember, Alonso is our number one driver. And I'm gonna maintain that. Now I need to do testing. At least we shouldn't have to worry anymore about car number two or car number three, whatever, the test car <sighs> being worn because we're gonna be able to do enough testing even with the car at 39% wear. 
Okay, I need to start a final project, and I'm gonna be rushing this project pretty hard. Because we need an upgrade for Suzuka, and for Suzuka we're gonna get some decent points. I guarantee that. I shouldn't, but I will guarantee that. I think there's not much to do here other than watch that Loctite has two points there, Nortel has one, General Electric has one. And we still can't get freaking Asia Tech to build a good engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do testing and I will return here when I have done testing, so I'll be right back. Right, so here is the testing program program 206 miles exactly 21% setup 1% development and 43% research uh, our main drivers focused on setup and development while Bordeaux focused on research and a bit of setup and development that gave me full everything in terms of the bars so for development we're going to have high drag Okay, that's actually not the worst of the of the car penalties. High drag just increases the amount of heat you get, and at least the final races, other than Monza, are not that heat centric because the Nurburgring it's usually a pretty cold track, and Suzuka is also pretty cold, so. We're not gonna have we're not gonna have that many issues with engine heat other than this track. So there's that. Um, stand by. I was just in the correct amount of design percent to be able to get the airbox for the next stage. As you can see, we also got some research, but I'm gonna save it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rush an upgrade for Japan. To do this, you only need two races. Is the easiest in the world, but you don't get that much handling percentage. For this, you complete a stage, then uh, you you save some research, complete a stage, skip the next stage, complete the stage after that, and then skip the other stage, uh, saving up research in between races, of course. So for this one, I'm gonna complete design and model this uh, design and model design, and I'm gonna skip CFD simulation and wind tunnel. That's gonna give us like three, two, three, four percent, and it's gonna remove the high drag issue, which you know it, it it helps. Nothing else to do here. I definitely gonna need some spare parts, and I just hope that we do not DNF out of this race, so I don't have to be, uh, buy that many spare parts. Uh, in terms of of here, talk to PSN, and sure, keep talking to people. Um, for this one, I'm gonna keep the soft tire. The hard tire is more durable, but the soft tire strat is just so much faster than the hard tire strat. I'm gonna save up this setup for Nurburgring and I'm gonna just prepare this for qualifying. For this qualifying, it's probably gonna be like. Actually, let me move that rain point into heat. And move one of those alone, so dust points to rain. Yeah, because yeah, we have that setup issue. Might as well move one point to heat, so I'm able to push the engine. It's, if it rains, it's gonna be sad, but not much I can do. You know what? Let's just doesn't really matter. I I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. Orders confirmed. And let's go. Italian. Okay. Dry qualifying. Low wind speed. Pretty good for us. This engine, man. I hate it. <laughs> it's gonna have to carry us for three more races. Come on, man. You can do it. Qualify well with that upgrade. Come on, boys, you can do it. I present you with this qualifying result. Giancarlo Fisichella puts it on pole after I slander him for, you know, dropping that last race. Fernando Alonso puts it second after I slander him for DNF in the car because he ran out of talent. But as it happens, Fernando Alonso has unlimited talent. 
Then you have the Williams of Barrichello and Raikkonen. Third and fourth, Michael Schumacher got destroyed. Seven tenths, man. Seven, well, six tenths. Seven tenths. Let's make it seven tenths to his teammate. I mean, physical, I was just four tenths to the next guy. He was, he was overpowered on this one. Then you have Coulthard, Weber, Panis, Marquez, and all the way down here, four tenths lower than his teammate, Enrique Bernoldi. Why do I have a feeling that Bernoldi is going to have the better race? But anyway, considering this, there is a non-zero chance that we could win this race. It's going to be a dry race at 26 degrees, that's okay. Average wind speed, soft tires. The strategy is pretty obvious. We're going to try to go, we can't actually go like 40 laps. We're just going to go 32. This track doesn't affect you much if you have a lot of fuel. But tire wear is like, can be quite significant. So I don't want to stretch that far. And these are soft tires, so they don't last that long. Even if we're saving, they don't quite last that, that long. But 32 laps, they can absolutely do it. And 30, actually. So we can overcut people. Hopefully this, was, this one goes better than Belgium. And if it does, man, do I want points on this one? Let's see if we can get them. Save. Uh, lower this to 100%. I forgot to do it before qualifying ended, but it's okay. Save. And of course, we're going to have a laggy start because um, graphic card will not help me here. Okay. Please hold on to your positions. Stefan Sarasan with a false start. We drop down to Ford with Alonso 10th. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we cannot have a good start. Also, we can have good frames. For whatever reason. If it works anything, I think. No, physical already took the lead. Seventh, that's decent, but it can be better. Just a terrible restart. Now it's eight. I massively increased the orders just to be able to hold on to those positions. It didn't quite work out. But let's see if we can recover them. Bernoldi is ninth now. He's 11, sorry. I spoke too soon. But if Alonso, if you could move up, that will be good. You were second. You need to be higher than that. And please stop lagging for the love of God. I guess it will stop lagging when cars spread out and it doesn't have to render them in cars. He's going for seventh. I mean, that was that was, that was Bernoldi going for, for that. Okay, I have to drop this to three. Drop this to one. Drop this to three. Actually, I can keep this up for one more lap, then I'm going to drop everything else. Okay, as long as Alonso can keep up with the people in front, we should be okay. Giancarlo Physical still leads from Weber and Michael. Yeah, expected. We're going to keep this up. Saracen serving his uh, pit stop penalty because he false started. He had an actual false start. Bernoldi here is trying to pass that Benetton, it's not quite working out, and Alonso got overtaken as well, which is not good. Alright, so we are in a more realistic position now that, you know, the start happened. Please stop. Please stop. Okay, we're there. Bit of a concertina, or however it is said. Uh, Bernoldi, he just... no. He couldn't, he couldn't do anything to that Benetton. Ninth. I still think we can win this race because we have the superior strategy and there's a McLaren there that's slowing down this whole pack and I don't want that. I'm gonna have to reduce. Yeah, it's gonna have to lo go, go, go down right now. Gonna have to go down now. He was seventh for a moment. He's now ninth. He's ninth. He's gonna remain ninth. Just Verstappen's out. Okay, and Coulthard's gone. He's now eight, and that will be it for now. I will see you later. But this race, 
this race right here is looking interesting and you know there's points at play we can definitely get them you just saw we were very good in qualifying lag seems to have stopped which is good don't let yourself get past you did get past okay now it's lap three <laughs> it's lap three i'm still recording anyway i will see you later when things actually stabilize this is a critical update um michael schumacher bit on lap 14 or 13 for him i suppose which means he's on a three stop strategy which means ferrari are throwing away the win with the michael they really want to set up a championship fight with Fisichella, don't they? Fisichella, of course, has just gone into the distance. He will not be stopped. Except if he DNFs, of course, with a car issue or a driver issue, but... Yeah. And I think the prospect of a win is thrown out the window simply because uh, the Ferrari is too dominant. But every other position ahead of us easily overcut if they're on a two-stop. If they're on a two-stop, we're gonna gobble them up. And just like that, pretty much everyone that could have been a threat has now pit. Good job, Mark Webber. Good, good job. People like Mark Webber have decided to pit for a two-stop or three-stop. Uh, the main contender for uh, three-stopper is the Michael. Everyone else that pit is contending on a one-stop. The people ahead, like, of course, physical has not been confirmed just yet. He could be on a one-stop, he could be on a two-stop. We're going to see. As for Montoya, um, once again, we'll have to see. Maybe he goes on to lap 29 or something like that, goes for a one-stop. I hope he doesn't. I hope he pits, like, lap 20 or something, and he's on a two-stop, because that means we can overcut him. Physical, we're not gonna be able to unless he bottles it, like does a Weber and gets a pit lane speeding penalty. I hope he does, so that maybe he can, we can win. But doesn't it annoy you when your computer pulls you out of the software you are recording to show you something, and you don't want to see that thing? But anyway. I do hope Fisichella gets the penalty, stop it Alonso, gets that, uh, gets a penalty, crashes out something, so that maybe we can win. I know Ferrari Italian driver winning at their home track is a nice storyline, but I care about ourselves. Of course, I stopped the recording at the exact same time Montoya goes to the pits, so that means this is a potential 2-3-4 Frost. Now, it's on you, man. It's on you, Fisichella. Oh, shit. I did not think Montoya will take that, will be that fast. I thought he will take a lot longer. It might not be a 2 3 anymore. <laughs> I'll update you later when we actually have to pick. All right, so welcome to the half race report where we are going to have a series of critical pit stops. The first one will be Bernoldis. He needs to have a very quick pit stop that is not pit stop glitched. It's not obligatory, but it will be very recommended. The reason for that is that we're fighting for the two final places of the podium because we're not going to catch Fisichella. And not only do we need to, you know, be ahead of Montoya, who's in a two-stop, we need to be ahead of everyone else. I know. Hopefully, uh, this man here, Barrichello, is not going to beat this lap, and this man here, uh, the Michael, is not going to beat this lap, and maybe... Good. No one. No one. Clean pit stop. We are looking good. Because the Bernoulli pit stop was really the most critical. It's going to be, like just ahead of that Benetton. Not even that, he's gonna be ahead of a lazy. Yes! Good. So, the next one is Alonso's pit stop, and I might, might as well just cut the recording until we get there and do a proper race report. It is indeed Alonso's turn now, and again, um, Bernoldis was very critical, and I made a mistake and said it was the most critical, but no, it was not. 
Alonso's is the most critical. If we have a pit stop glitch, it's done. He's not going to be able to be second. If we have a poor stop, it might be salvageable, but it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Why? Because of himself. Okay, how long are you going to take to refire that car? He didn't take that long. It wasn't that long of a stop. Ahead of the Williams. Ahead of the Williams. Okay. So we are in business. Uh, even if he did not, even if he did not stall the car, it's nine seconds. It was as fast as Bernoldi's pretty much. It just took him like four extra tenths to refire the car. It didn't cost him any positions. Okay, so the current positions are Fisichella, Montoya, Raikkonen, Alonso, who is well in position to win this right now. Win this right now. Uh, if physical DNFs is all better off, but he's looking well in position to take second in this race because Montoya and Barrichello, I think that's Barrichello, no, that's Raikkonen. Uh, Montoya and Raikkonen have to beat again, and pretty much that they have to beat again, they cannot go to the end. Please get that moved on. No, he did not. Uh, they have to pit again. And they're gonna give up the position to Alonso, assuming he can... Okay, he didn't screw it up. Assuming he doesn't screw up. Assuming he keeps up, which, I mean, he's very close by. He can do it. Assuming he does that, he's gonna be second no matter what. And if he's got aware to DNF at his home track, I'm sorry, Fisipor, I'm just wishing for that. <laughs> but yeah, he could win this race if Fisical at DNFs, and if not, he could be second. As for Bernoldi himself, as we get a bunch of lag, as for Bernoldi himself, he could finish third if he keeps up with this whole group. Because again, these two have to pit, and they will give out the position to whoever is behind him. For now, that looks like it will be Bernoldi. But we'll have to see. After the pit stop cycle, we will make a proper review. But as of now, the order is Fisichella, Montoya, Raikkonen, Alonso, Barrichello, Michael Schumacher, Coulthard, Bernoldi, Alessi, Panis, and you know, there's a bunch of other people. Coulthard did manage to pass Alonso, but, so that's a bit of a concern, but not that big of a concern. It's lap 43 now, and things have finally stabilized. Um, for a while, I was very confused with Michael Schumacher's strategy, as he had not pit, despite being like the first person to pit. I was sure he was on a three-stop. I was wrong. He was actually on a two-stop with a very long middle stint. He probably has the freshest tires among everyone, except Mika Hakkinen, but Mika Hakkinen is not threat. In fact, where is Mika? He just got lapped. He is not threat. Don't worry about him. But that means... Um, first, Alonso has set his tires on fire. It doesn't matter. Uh, Bernoldi, you are instructed to not overtake Alonso unless he actually pits. And I don't think he has the need to pit. Um, second of all, our biggest threat right now is either David Coulthard or if Michael can pass him, Michael Schumacher. Uh, 10 laps to go... I don't think they'll catch, but I've seen some very good drives at, at other times, and, you know, we might see them catching Bernoldi at the end, and he was going to have to defend for his life. Alonso, he just has to keep his cool, keep his... Uh, keep his star wear under control, he should be able to do it, but if not, we're going to have Bernoldi as an extra layer of protection. Yeah, the tires are wearing out a bit faster now than they should, but it should be okay. We should have these two, three in the back, unless, you know, Alonso blows it. Or Bernoldi blows it. We're gonna see. I will come back to you in the final laps. Isikela probably has this in the back, but... Equal DNF. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... Benetton has completely DNF out of this race as Mark Webber crashed with Torso Marquez and Panis had hydraulics issues like decades ago. 
But um, Mark Webber, Mark, Mark Webber, Giancarlo Fisichella has entered his final lap. Nothing will stop him now. We're going to have a Italian driver for Ferrari winning the Italian Grand Prix for more important in our context. Both Alonso and Bernoulli have entered their final lap. They are leading David Coulthard, Michael Schumacher, I think Juan Montoya is there, Raikkonen and Barrichello, and nothing's gonna stop them, barring themselves spinning out of the race. Giancarlo Fisichella wins, and it has been detected that there's an earthquake in the, ta in the, in the Monza region. Yes. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a track invasion pretty soon, but more important for us, Alonso is second, Bernoldi is third, we are gonna finish this race with a podium. Michael Schumacher has finally caught and passed David Coulthard. He is now fourth, fifth, fifth again, Coulthard. Sixth, it's between the Williams and Montoya. I wonder who it will be. It looks like it will be Raikkonen, but I don't know. Alonso finishes second, Bernoldi finishes third. It will be Michael Schumacher fourth. Fifth will be David Coulthard, and sixth, it's going to be Raikkonen. Frost, on its own, scores every team that's not Italian. That's not Italian. That's it. Let's go. Physical wins. That was a quick race. One, one hour, 19. Physical wins from Paul. Alonso, is, the race history is going to say, yeah, he finishes second. He, he started second, finished second. It took a lot to get him back up there. Bernoldi, he fought. He was maybe a bit faster than Alonso at the start of the race. No, he was faster than Alonso at the start. He finishes third. Then you have Michael Schumacher of Ferrari finishing fourth. Basically, I just threw himself back at this championship. Maybe. Coulthard is 5th and probably that's it championship over, Kimi Raikkonen 6th. The rest of them is Barrichello, Montoya, Alesi and Hakkinen rounding out the top 10. Here is the rest of them. Not that many DNFs today, just an awesome day. Alonso is now 9th with Bernoulli tied for 10th with Montoya. As for the top, Michael Schumacher 82 points, Fisicola 9 points back. Kuldhar is hanging on by a thread. He could still win, but it will require a miracle. As for Alonso, he could climb up to 6th? No. Yes, in theory he could climb up all the way up to 5th, up to but it will require minor miracles, like winning two races. More realistically, he could finish 7th. And Bernoldi could also be uh, um, like in the same Alonso sphere. As for teams, Ferrari, they won the championship already. McLaren locked into second. Williams not quite locked onto third because Sauber's there. Same with Benetton. Sauber and Williams are not safe. Prost, if miracles happen, they could Prost could finish fifth or even fourth. Or even third. But I doubt it. It would be amazing if after how horrible this year was, we finished fourth, which is exactly where we finished last year. It would be a minor miracle. Of course you're still upset. Why wouldn't you be? Fisicola adds another race win. Bernoulli is happy. Alonso is happy, but wants a win. Yeah, physical wins from Paul. I think it's not quite a grand slam. Oh yeah, it's a grand slam. Let me confirm that. Let me confirm that it was a Grand Slam. Yeah. Grand Slam at Italy. Good job, Giancarlo. Uh, let's see. Great race. Both drivers on the podium. Ferrari with both drivers in the points. Yeah. Alonso did stall, but that didn't do anything. That didn't do anything. Look at the Montesemolo. Because, of course, because Italy. Let's see. We made a loss, but I expected that to be a loss. We will repair the cars, don't worry. We should lose the research and the setup stuff. We got a TV advantage. I think we're gonna carry that one to 2003. And that race advantage too. We got a fantastic fixed deal turns with Lucky Strike. 
better terms with Loctite, licensing, good results, it's please, yeah, bad pizza, but pizza, whatever. Getting both of our drivers on the podium is fantastic for business. And you know what, that's, that's actually pretty good, but um, I'm still considered the ninth best manager in Formula 1, which, yeah. The FIA considers us, where is it? Considers us the seventh best team. Again, we have to beat Sauber and VAR. We need that cash. Well, ideally, just Sauber. We can actually do that. Okay, let's see. Uh, PSN is happy. Let's go talk with Acer. Take off these people in, uh, in Lucky Strike. I do not know where I will put them. I can just... De yeah, deploy them in LG. I'm gonna carry this to 2003 to speed up the deals that I'm gonna do in 2003. Uh, speed up the talks with Norsel, please. Now, um, can we get traction control level 3? No, we cannot. And I'm not gonna work in, in any more medical. <sighs> I would have preferred this to be full, but we deal with what we have. Next stop is actually start developing it again, even though I'm not going to put people there. Dump those research points there. Skip that phase. And... Hmm. That electronics is not going to be finished this year. Okay, we have two 2003 cars. And you need to repair the cars, obviously. Come on. We can build some spares. I'm gonna build some spares. I'm gonna build all of the spares. I'm gonna build four. We only need four. And now I'm gonna build a car. Pretty expensive. I think I'm not gonna build another car after uh, the European Grand Prix. Do not read that. It says Europe. Uh, editor. Thank you. So yeah, there's that. There's also the fact that I need to deploy all of the points. And these points will all go to uh, Alonso. Um, all points to Alonso. Um, and I'm, I'm... No, I guess... I can't deploy all the points on Alonso because I have to help Bernoldi. No wind points, but uh, put some rain points on Bernoldi. Mm. Mm. I'm going to put all of my uh, all of my hopes and dreams on Alonso doing well in the next race, and it raining. Sorry, Bernoldi, but you knew what you signed on when you signed up with Prost. You knew. Don't worry, you'll get a better car set up in, in Japan. Alright, this one of course is next episode stuff. Um, just put, just, 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 yeah. I will of course customize these values more later. Nothing from anyone. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure the next race is gonna be like soft tires. Like soft one stop or something like that. You know what? There's no point. We have enough cash. We have enough cash. Okay. I think. I think. That will be it. I'm pretty happy. I thought, you know, Spa will keep me down because I, we usually do better at Spa than Monza. But hey. A double podium finish. At Italy, pretty good. And we saw an Italian with win at Monza on a Ferrari, which, good job, Fizzy. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTuber stuff, and support me on coffee if you really so desire. And I hope to see you on the next episode where we will wrap up the 2002 season. So I'll see you there.